Hello everyone, and today we're going to be talking about quantum tunneling. Now this is a very interesting and a very loaded topic, so we have a lot to go over. So I'm going to start out with an example, and then we'll go from there. So I'm going to start out by drawing two bowls, just two ordinary bowls, and we need a stable point where we can place our marble. So I'm going to place it at the bottom. And classical physics tells us that by placing this at the bottom, it's not going to move unless we move it ourselves. However, as you can see, I've drawn it in bowl 2 as well. This is an example of quantum tunneling. So how does this work? Why does it work? Well, it has a lot to do with the quantum level, so let's get into that. How exactly small is it? Well, it's one of the smallest levels of existence. It's extremely minuscule, and it's smaller than light itself. Therefore, it's almost complete darkness. And to put that into perspective, just how small it is, let's look at one of the synapses from your brain. It's about 20 nanometers in size, and it's extremely small, however, it exerts large amounts of energy just like things on the quantum level. Now, due to the nature of the quantum level, things that happen there are extremely improbable. Therefore, they can't be predicted like classical physics. Now, as we can see here, we've got a quantum atom. And as you can see, it's drawn in three dimensions as to account for quantum mechanics. And one of the big questions here is... Why don't we experience this for ourselves, or why can't we experience this for ourselves? This gets into a larger term that we'll go into later, called quantum decoherence. And it helps to explain why we can experience this. However, the simple answer is, we're just too big. We can't experience it because it's impossible to accurately measure things on the quantum level right now. Now, to help explain this, I've... I'm going to draw another example, and we're going to talk about the quantized energy and how that plays into the quantum level. So when I say energy is quantized, I mean that it comes in discrete units that can't be broken down any further than they already are. Therefore, energy is its own distinct unit in the quantum level. Now in this example we're going to talk more about quantized energy and quantum tunneling. Now this is just an example something to kind of get you more familiar with it. So this is a brick wall and there's this man that's throwing a ball. So classical physics as well as common sense would tell you that when you throw this ball at the wall every time it's going to bounce back toward you. Now in the quantum level, in quantum physics, there is a slight possibility that it could go through the wall itself and pass through the other side. Now to help explain this I've included some funny clips here. The camera right now? Okay, tell me when you start. Go. So, how is this possible exactly? Well, let's get into it. So this all goes back to energy quantization, as I was stating. So, there are two distinct forms of energy quantization in both the classical realm, magic physics land, as well as the quantum realm. Now, Energy quantization in the classical realm is like that of a ramp. Any possible amount of energy can be quantized. While in the quantum realm, it's more like a staircase where each 
is a different length. Therefore, only certain possible amounts of energy can be quantized. Now, if we look at one final example here, we have this particle that's moving towards a barrier. Now, as we can see in this classical example, it's stopped by the barrier. This is because the energy of the barrier is greater than the energy of the particle. However, in this quantum example, we can see that the energy didn't really matter as it was quantized and the particle was able to pass through. Now, let's talk a little bit more about quantum decoherence. As previously stated, it is the theory that accounts for the loss of coherence on the quantum level. Now, as stated, we're probably too big. We are definitely too big to experience things on the quantum level. However, one could argue that we experience it in everyday life. So let's look at an example. Now, the very device that you're viewing this video on, whether it be a computer, a smartphone, a tablet, has a processor in it. And these processors act as sort of quantum prisons. Now, these quantum prisons, or processors, are able to effectively capture uh, electrons and convert them into energy that are, that's usable. If it wasn't for these, we wouldn't be able to power our devices, much less program them. So what does this all mean, then? How does it affect our everyday lives? Well, let's go over a quick summary here. Looking back at the atom, we can see that quantum mechanics has a lot to do with it, and we can see that energy quantization also plays a vital role in quantum tunneling, as it allows a particle to pass through an area of space that's typically forbidden to it in classical physics. Thanks for watching.